Within the past few months, Reddit seems to been flooded with art not created by humans, but by AI. And when it comes to the realm of creativity, that's really not what AI has been known for. But in the past few years, there have been leaps in the creative field of AI. And in one such area, you're actually able to give that AI a prompt and using a prompt to create art that has never existed before. And you might be thinking, okay, how do these things actually work? In this video, I will discuss contrastive learning, which is an important tool meaning these creative AIs, such as Clip, learn and teach themselves. Now, let me start off with a motivating example. Let's say you have a data set of images that are unlabeled. Now, the only thing we really have connected to those images are the images themselves and their file names. And chances are you're not lucky enough to get descriptive file names that tell you what's in the images. So I guess you're going to have to label them yourself. However, this can be a very tedious task, especially as your data set size grows. So that brings up an important question. Is there a way to train a model without having labels to these images? Well, that's where something called self-supervised learning, and in this case, contrastive learning, comes in. Let me go through how contrastive learning works now. Take an image and get two random crops from these images. First, we want to plug these image crops through the function that we want to train, f, and get the hidden representations h sub i and h sub j. Second, we're going to plug these hidden representations through another function g, where we'll get a second representation z sub i and z sub j. And our goal with these second representations are to basically maximize the similarity between them. And you might be thinking, okay, why are we maximizing the similarity between these two images? Why are there two different functions for this? Yeah, it can get kind of confusing. But remember, we don't have labels, but we do have are the pixels in the image. And what we can do with this is we can train the function f to decipher whether or not two crops come from the same image. And we do this by maximizing the similarity between these two output vectors. Now you might be thinking, okay, what do I mean by similarity? First off, remember that I said we had this function that we want to train f. In this case, imagine it's a ResNet 50 model, which produced these hidden representations h. However, we also have another function g, which in this case, imagine it's a multi-layer perceptron. So basically just a couple of fully connected layers. Remember I said that we want to maximize the similarity between these z vectors. And in this case, the similarity function is the cosine similarity. And the cosine similarity is a function that tells you whether or not two vectors are pointing in the same direction. And it's maximized when they are in the same direction and you get a value of one. However, you can see as it goes around this plane, it gets a value of zero when they are orthogonal to one another and it gets a value of negative one when they are in complete opposite direction to one another. So basically what we wanted to do is make sure that it outputs vectors from the two crops that point in the same direction. And our hope is that by making the model learn how to map two crops of the same image to a similar embedding is that, is that it learns to associate different structure and objects in the picture to one another. For example, it might be important to let our model know that, hey, if a guy's mouth is open, he might be eating something like a hot dog. Now, there's still something wrong with this type of learning. The model can learn to map everything, regardless of what it's given as input, to the same vector. This happens, we say the model has collapsed and it's not able to actually learn anything. And this can happen because we're not actually telling the model to learn to map two different crops that are not even in the same images to different embeddings. So this leads up to our final loss function. We don't just sample one image, we actually sample in other images and end up with two times in crops. And with this, we can tell the model to maximize the cosine similarity between crops that belong to the same image, but also minimize the cosine similarity between two different crops that are from different images. And we can do this by using this cross entropy loss function. For each pair of crops, we want to maximize their similarity, which is why we put that in the numerator. And then in the denominator, we're comparing a given image's crops to all the other 2 and minus 1 crops. And we want it to minimize the cosine similarity between two crops that are from different images. So 
essentially this value is minimized when you get a very small value in the denominator and get a very large value in the numerator. And yeah, that basically wraps up what contrastive learning is. We have the model learn to map two crops from the same image to an embedding that point in the same direction and two crops that don't belong to the same image to embeddings that point in different directions. And then after we're done with this, we can basically just drop the G function and then fine tune this F function to some downstream task, say like classification or anything else really. Now I might have left out a couple of details just to kind of get a very short and sweet overview of this topic. But yeah, if you're interested in learning more, I would recommend checking out the SimClear paper or checking out this blog by Facebook AI called Self-Supervised Learning, the Dark Matter of Intelligence. Both those links are in the description. And if you like this video, you know, give it a like. Can't give a dislike anymore, can you, eh? But <laughs> yeah, um, subscribe if you wanna watch more videos like this. And yeah, comment down below if there's any other types of videos you'd like me to explain or anything else really in machine learning. But yeah, thanks for watching.